Greetings! Welcome to the Warp Zone. My name is Molly Hedy Carroll. And my name is Erik van Wees. This week, we're talking about game journalism. Yeah. You're into game journalism, aren't you? Yeah, very much so. I uh, uh, started writing some feedback for people on uh, Newgrounds uh, for their games. And uh, later on then wrote articles uh, on a news, uh, game news website, uh, which is called Game Booze. And I've been writing things on both sides for the developers to make them think about uh, you know why they made the games in the, in their in this particular way, and also on the gamer side, you know why do we why why do we like this game? Yes or no? And then I we think start thinking about that. I know I know for a fact that you try to go into things a bit deeper with games. You try to talk about games as a medium in your journalism rather than just this game was good, seven out of ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the funny thing um, with game journalism at the moment in the games industry is if books were reviewed the same way as games are reviewed nowadays that will be saying well the the font was very nice and the spacing of it makes it very easy to read yeah, good and paper no, yeah yeah good, <laughs> good paper with uh, not a lot of uh, pages so that was very nice and the story is pretty interesting you know that's you don't really go into the experience you gained from it and that's something i find very important when you're talking about games when you're playing them. In a, lo a lot of it's pretty superficial, yeah. There's a, there was a great example recently, there's a game called Spec Ops The Line, and this was a, this was like, it, it looked like a shooter, and it started out as just another shooter, but then it goes, then it suddenly takes a turn, and it, beca it, it becomes about the horrors of war, and questions these things, and kind of questions the glorification of war through games a little and bit. And what it does to people, exactly. the soldiers as well. But the problem was, is that, um, see, games are like they can be like 80 plus hours. Yeah. So I understand that they might be a bit superficial because the experience is so large, but a and lot the journalist of journalists has to, you know, they have to they review have within a certain time, you know, yeah, they, got, exactly. they got to deliver quick. So yeah. But the thing is that a lot of the reviews for this game they just put, oh, it's it's a shooter. It's got nice graphics. They didn't. They never even got, got to, to the point, point of the game. <laughs> that will be exactly the same as you watch uh, the movie Psycho and then review it at the half point. Yeah, you just watch half the movie. Half and the go, movie. Oh, it's about this woman, and then she goes and has a shower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you completely miss the entire point. It's yeah. yeah. They need to. There needs to be a way to get the experience. There has to be a better way to to. Um, to cover games. I mean, yeah. there's a there's a, another example that uh, really spoke to me was, I can't remember which game it was. It was one of those big ones like Mass Effect or Skyrim. One yeah. of those big ones that got a really high score, like nine or 10 or something like that in a magazine. And next to it, there was a review for a pinball game, yeah. which got like an 8.5. So this, does that say? this numerical yeah. measurement is saying that this pinball game was almost as good as Mass Effect. Exactly. And that doesn't, like, not, not to diss pinball, I love pinball, but it doesn't really give you an idea of what the experience is about. Yeah. The thing I do like about what game journalism does is that when you follow a specific reviewer, uh, they kind of have your, you know, the same taste as you have, then you can kind of follow that and, you know, get the games that you like as well, which is a very good form of uh, getting in touch with new games because of that. However, um, you know, game journalism can be on multiple sides. You have the that you review the games for the consumer, but you also have the journalism who uh, shine a critical perspective on the industry and the things that are going on at the moment. Uh, but when it comes to games, it's important that we, you know, once in a while provoke some thought, you know, and how can we push the medium forward all together? And I think, you know, some critical journalism is required for that. You know? uh, yeah, and the thing about journalists as well is they're kind of the spokespeople, you know, they kind of represent uh, games, because I mean, um, with ga if games are to be taken seriously, they should be reviewed seriously exactly. and, can, and, res and uh, treated as the art form that exactly. they are. It's a big responsibility to be a journalist. Insane chase sequences. Creative stunting and taking control over random people by hijacking their minds. Drive for San Francisco brings the fresh and new driving action some humoristic voyeurism in style. It's an action-packed playground full of surprises and variety. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to star in a 1970s cop show, then look no further. Drive for San Francisco will give you the light, camera and lots of action. Unravel the mysterious plot through playing various missions which are spread out over the beautiful open setting of, you guessed it, San Francisco. 
This game will have you on the edge of your driver's seat at all times. Be it from excitement when chasing down a maniacal fugitive, or of sheer laughter when fucking up someone's day after creating mayhem on the highways. Drive for San Francisco is available on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC, and it will be sure to take you for a ride you haven't experienced yet. Warp Zone gives Drive for San Francisco a definite buy. True driving game classic of its generation, if it isn't already. There is no part of me that wants to be what I saw. Yeah, but you saw it. I'm not losing my mind.